Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Eureka Solutions webinar, which will be focusing on NetSuite for Life Sciences. My name is Jack Loudon. I'm a solution consultant here at Eureka Solutions. Now, some of you may have used or seen NetSuite before, um, but hopefully either way, this, this will demonstrate um, the benefits that NetSuite can have on life science businesses from pre-revenue through to com commercialization and beyond. Now, the agenda for today's webinar, um, I've got a few PowerPoint slides to begin with, as usual, um, that we'll kind of start and talking and introducing ourselves and NetSuite, um, and then obviously going into the deeper uh, diving of why NetSuite for Life Sciences. Once the slides are over, um, I will be giving you a demonstration, which will give you a kind of general overview of the system and also go into the procure to pay process. Now, feel free to submit questions uh, throughout the session just so that you're not forgetting anything. Uh, but we, will, we will be covering this at the end of the session. So just um, an introduction to the Eureka Solutions. Um, we were founded in 2004 um, and were built on the two core principles which of technical expertise and customer service. And we like to think and believe that uh, this is still held true to this day. Now, we provide implementation, development, and support services for NetSuite Staging 200. And we also built our own integration application called BeSynchly. And this allows us to um, integrate kind of third party uh, systems, whether that be through our kind of pre built connectors for uh, systems like Shopify, or if there's any more um, kind of niche systems that are used, we can provide bespoke connections as well. Now, from 2004, we had three staff. We've now got over 70 today, and the majority of these are in technical roles. So we're trying to hold it up that uh, technical expertise uh, principle in there, and we hope that the customer service is really shown here with our 9.7 out of 10 customer satisfaction rating. And this is provided by Customer Sure, which is a third party um, who provides, kind of makes sure it's uh, independent and reviews are... Uh, are not just uh, combated by yourself. So when we uh, complete a support case, we would always send out the user a uh, survey. And out of the over 7.7k uh, surveys that have been provided, um, we've got an average rate of nine and a half. Uh, no, sorry, nine point seven out of ten. Um, so about a bit about ourselves as a partner. Um, before NetSuite, we were primarily a Safe 200 partner, um, but we started becoming a NetSuite partner in 2012. And in this year, we won a MIA new partner of the year. And so we were able to bring on and carry on that um, expertise and experience that we had from implementing Safe 200 into NetSuite as well. And since then, we've implemented over 105 NetSuite projects from end to end. Um, and the majority of these uh, cus uh, customers are still customers to this day who we support their um, NetSuite at this point. Now, in 2021, um, we achieved the Five Star Partner Award and also the UK Best Performing Partner Award as well. Now, they don't actually provide the Five Star Partner Award anymore. They now just accredit it with uh, expertise in ERP, um, of which we got for the past two years as well. And that's based off of um, consultancy certifications and the amount of projects that we are providing each year. Now to uh, introduce you to NetSuite if you haven't been already. Um, a bit of history to begin with, they were founded in 1998 um, and at that time they were probably the kind of pioneers of cloud accountancy software. Um, if you think back to 1998, I don't think there were any kind of other cloud accounting systems um, so they, they really are pioneered that, and that's probably their, their true strength um, and of reason why they've got to where they are. Obviously, in 2016, they were acquired by Oracle, um, and this has kind of helped them on leaps and bounds since then. Now, with them being uh, built in the clouds, they are a true 100% cloud business management system. And this is, in, kind of, um, in comparison to other ERP systems that you might uh, look at, a lot of them were built on-premise and then were developed onto the cloud at a later point as well. So there's a few tenancy issues there, which NetSuite kind of manage themselves being true 100% cloud. It's 
comes with many benefits, such as being able to access it at any device, anytime, anywhere. It also means that all of your information and data is just on one database as well. So all of the different modules that you might have in the system, whether it be your financials, your um, HR, CRM, projects, manufacturing, it's all held within the one database. So you've got one single source of the truth. And there's no um, duplication of data between departments that might be telling lies, for example. In addition, um, it's you know, a high class security and privacy uh, is built on Oracle's cloud infrastructure. So it does have that um, a prestige of security there. Um, in addition, it's also got an availability commitment of 99.7%. In reality, it's actually 99.98%. Um, and that can be uh, checked online as well. As a cloud-based system, it automatically upgrades every six months. So that means that all of NetSuite's users will always be on the same version of NetSuite, meaning they, they can always be using the most up-to-date features. Um, there's no there's no version lock, and all of the upgrades are included within the cost as well. So there's, you're not needing to shell out on any uh, additional implementation, server upgrades, um, feature upgrades, etc. We're actually uh, about to begin next week, twenty twenty four point one um, this month, which will then carry on into April. And why is it the world's uh, or why is it called the world's number one cloud ERP system? Well, it's used by over thirty seven thousand customers worldwide. Now, I like to use this image as well um, to explain how NetSuite kind of fits in. Um, I know some other people where they've used ERP systems or accounting software before. It's kind of like bolting on um, different apps and adding in different modules, which although are part of the same product, they don't really merge the same. Whereas NetSuite, you've got this single data source, which is kind of tapping into any, fin uh, any module that you want to add on. Typically, your kind of core product would be your financials and ERP, but you've also got CRM added on. You've got the ability to add on your HR um, project management, supply chain features as well. You can also see there we've got our suite app partners. Um, so if there's any products that aren't provided by NetSuite, typically there's a um, suite app partner who have developed their own product within NetSuite. So it looks like NetSuite. It feels like NetSuite and works as well as NetSuite as well. So... If you're looking for payroll, OCR, uh, invoice and scanning capture, that kind of stuff, that can also be available in this uh, suite app marketplace. And then you can see surrounded just by that uh, image there, we've got the multi-language, multi-currency, multi-country, multi-subsidiary as well. So it can be um, started off with just one small wedge there with your ERP and financials, but you can then build that up across um, kind of internationally and different modules as well. Okay, so I've got a, a fairly large list of uh, some of our uh, NetSuite customers here. Um, you see across the top um, two rows other than Tower League, um, for example. Um, these are all kind of life science-based companies that we have worked with and are still our customers to this day. So if we look at the likes of Quell, um, Achilles, College and Solutions, You've conceived kind of true examples of uh, life science businesses that are into the manufacturing commercialization stage, whereas it might have some of the smaller companies in build that are maybe pre-revenue. In addition to that, we've also got some life sciences technology-based uh, companies such as Cambridge Cognition, Dotmatics, um, and also Bioforum, who are a life sciences uh, kind of community organization. So hopefully some logos that you recognise there. Um, and it's just to show the, the breadth that NetSuite can um, kind of scale with as well. So although you may be in a pre-revenue stage, NetSuite can kind of help you put in those uh, processes and automation um, and kind of um, making you uh, kind of compliant with audits at a really early stage if you are looking to grow uh, an IPO or be uh, bought over or require investment, et cetera, as well. And then below that, we've got some um, some kind of home home brand names that you should probably be aware of as well, such as Jacuzzi, St Andrews Links Golf Course, MFG, who we tend to show um, to all of our customers as well. It's a true example of how far NetSuite can scale to. 
Um, MFG reported a turnover of five and a half billion um, in the last financial year. So it's really shown you that NetSuite can scale and grow with the user from pre-revenue to five and a half billion, um, which is quite crazy to think. Um, and again, we're just going to shout out some other, um, some fl flight club of Putt Shack and Luton Town Football Club, of course. Um, I've got a quick kind of quote though, from uh, one of our customers, Connect. And they had uh, they were quoted as saying that NetSuite actually far exceeded their expectations um, and became their one stop shop for all of their financial information. Um, and this was along with the excellent support they received from Eureka Solutions, um, which allowed them to use NetSuite as a platform for growth. And I kind of added a slide in as well because Connect actually in their first year um, grew, I think, over 200% um, of using NetSuite. That's not blaming it on NetSuite, that was just they had implemented NetSuite at the right time so that if you were to think about in your scenario, would you be able to grow that much um, with using the system that you've got just now? Um, and I think, and I'm pretty sure the fact that Connect actually um, lost a member of uh, their finance team and they didn't need to replace them either. So they, the system managed to grow with them and they didn't need to back backfill any um, employees as well because their productivity went up. Now, on Sweet Success, Sweet Success is NetSuite's sales and implementation methodology. Um, and what it is, is it uses out of the box features based on industry leading practices. So you'll have different, many, uh, different Sweet Success products such as the financials first, wholesale distribution. Um, manufacturing services, et cetera. And what each of these products provide are out of the box, user roles, process uh, process workflows, dashboards, uh, reports, KPIs. And it just means that what you have in the sales process is a much easier understanding of what each product will give you. But it also means that on implementation, it will get you up and running much quicker than a traditional ERP uh, deployment, which back in the day could take years. What you've now got is out of the box processes that can be tweaked and customized. And if, for example, you're quite a small business, you might not have the concrete processes up in place. So what you're getting is leading uh, practice processes from NetSuite's implementations that they've done over the past 25 years as well. So what you're using is um, kind of leading processes or it can also be customized. And this just allows you to get a quicker return on your investment as well. So the reason why we're here today is why NetSuite for grown businesses. So while we kind of carry on from the Suite Success methodology, you've got that pre-built functionality. Um, so what you can actually do is you can start off with just the real essentials. Um, so although NetSuite can be a full-blown ERP uh, system, you could just start off with the kind of basic accounting and get in exactly what you need uh, at the beginning. And then it's kind of highly encouraged by ourselves and NetSuite that you'd have a phase stairway approach, which depending on what stage you are um, and your kind of life science cycle um, can really suit you. It might be at a, a kind of commercialization stage and actually wanting a new system. That can all be done at the beginning. But what it really does help is just getting in the essentials at the beginning and then kind of working your way up um, and letting NetSuite scale with you. And that's where that uh, pre-revenue uh, discovery stage through to the commercialization helps with. As I mentioned, it's flexible and scalable. So although you have these out-of-the-box workflows in place, they can be easily um, changed in implementation. And that would all be scoped prior to any sales as well. So we would sit with you to map out your processes and say, where is it that this uh, workflow would actually differ for your process as well? And that's where we would then configure that and customize it. And in addition to that, it can also integrate with um, any systems that you're looking for via an API or a flat file as well. Another benefit that uh, NetSuite can provide, especially to life science businesses, is that uh, support of international expansion with your multi-company, multi-country, multi-language. Um, so if you're looking to move into America for IPO, um, if you're wanting to outsource any manufacturing and any kind of uh, cheaper labour countries as well, you've already got NetSuite localization set up so that um, there's not additional work required to provide that implementation. NetSuite has got localizations for 
um, kind of tens of countries throughout the world as well. Um, you've got that real-time visibility through dashboards and KPIs. So what you've got is a uh, visibility of your real-time data um, and that just allows you to make uh, decisions which are based on well and for well informed data and much quicker as well. You're not having to load up uh, kind of multiple Excel spreadsheets and make sure that they're actually the correct data at that point. There's automation of key business processes, which I'm hoping you'll uh, see the benefit of in the demonstration. And of course, with uh, being a life science company, SOX compliance is something that um, and it's kind of really key if you want to kind of reach that those larger stages as well. So that can be managed within the implementation to make sure that um, it's going to be compliant with any um, processes that are required. So this is my last slide before we go into the demonstration. Um, but just to show you some of the quantifiable benefits that were found from the from SL Associates. So they provided a survey on NetSuite customers. And they found that one of the largest benefits was the business visibility and actual in insights, which increased from 50 to 80%. Um, in addition to that, if you also look at some of the other key ones that you might want to look at is your collection to uh, uh, your collection of account receivables by 30 to 50%, um, your time to close your financial books reduced from 30 to 55% on average between customers. So if you were to think about your time to close being 10 days just now, um, if you can think about taking that down to five, also that's so much time saved as well. And kind of hand in hand with that, if you're uh, managing to close uh, your task much quicker, your st account staff productivity will increase, um, which was seen. Uh, 30 to 50 percent, it's all kind of dependent on um, where the previous uh, or where the user has. Is the system that the user used previously as well. So if you're just using spreadsheets just now, it can increase dramatically. Um, it all depends on where you're, where you're coming from. Okay, so I'll just pop into this demo account that we've got. Now, just to let you know that it's as you can enable multi-factor authentication and single sign-on if need be as well. Just move my face. Okay, dope. So as we log into NetSuite, we can see that we're greeted with our dashboard immediately. Um, so if I hover over here, you see that I've logged into a Sweet Success Financial First Premium account here. And I'm logged in as Andy Morgan, the Chief Financial Officer. Now, if you look down this list here, this is as a list of all of the out-of-the-box user roles that we've got within the system. And each of these users will have um, different permissions and visibility throughout the um, system as well. So if you can imagine your Chief Financial Officer, it's going to have a lot more visibility than our sales rep here. So it just allows you to put in these uh, processes and permissions into the system. And these can all be used as templates to change um, and customize the functionality that your users would be able to view. Now, coming over here um, into the global search bar, we've now got, uh, we can then set up records within the system. So we can search up any pages um, or transactions with a compute in it and we can see that we've got a list of contacts items uh, leads suppliers as well now if i wanted to just put our um buyer in which is using the vendor and um, role which can be customized this is just going to show up any vendors with computer in the name here so i'll just remove that that's just helpful if you've got a long list of uh, search results then we've then got our kind of tra traditional menu structure. So we've got our drop down menus, and this just allows us different ways to navigate throughout the system. Now, depending on what role that you're logged in as, you're going to have a different uh, menu center because you're going to be able to access different parts of the system. Coming down to our actual dashboard now, um, you'll see that we've got all of our information divided up in white boxes. Now, these white boxes are called our portlets here. And these portlets uh, um, allow you to kind of customize your dashboard. So each user will have their own dashboard and where they can see the information that is relevant to them. So as the CFO that I'm logged in as, 
I can see any expense reports, journals, um, bills, purchase orders, and any large invoices over 30 days which are outstanding that require paid. And part of the uh, benefits of NetSuite's dashboard is really having that um, kind of personalization to it. So as you can see here, I can set up my reminders tab to kind of add in really anything I want from the system. So if I wanted to see how many periods are left to close, then I could add that in just with a drag and drop and I can remove it as well. You also notice that some of these have uh, like a green C and that's just because they are a custom reminder. Now, reminders use save set, uses save searches in the system and save searches are like queries or uh, searches into the system using uh, filters and criteria to get the information that you want. So what, I'm, what these reminders will all be doing is looking at tasks and actions that are um, appropriate for me to complete. Now, when I mentioned personalizations, uh, another point is that I can just drag and drop this so I can change the dashboard to look how I want. Now, we typically encourage just to have the reminders at the top left because it's going to be actions that are required for you to complete. Moving on to the next portal, we've got some key performance indicators and some standard ones here just for the CFO. So um, looking at our sales this month, the last one, for expenses too, receivables and payables, uh, bank balances, etc. Now you see that all of these are hyperlinked and this just means that if I was to click on this, it would then take me down into the report, which this um, information is coming from. Um, you also be able to see that I can then uh, pull this up in a trend graph. Um, and I can also change the visibility of how I want to view that by periods as well. Um, and I can also edit this as well. So you've got a list of uh, standard KPIs that's come out of the box, and you can also add in your custom ones as well. Moving on, we've then got a KPI meter, and this is just reflective of um, the KPIs in here. So I can just change this to look at my payables as well. And this is just going to be focusing on the end of this one for this point in time. Now, coming down the screen, I've then got a report snapshot. So I, what I've set up is I've used different classifications which can be tagged onto transactions um, so that I can differentiate any spending and uh, sales between my different projects here. So I can look at the revenue by projects. Um, and as you can see, I've got project one, two and three. Um, and you can see that project three is the highest revenue project there. Now, what I can then do is I can view the report where this information is coming from. I can actually print the chart. I can download it as an image. Um, and I can also set it up or edit it to show me different data. Additionally, I could also change the, the, the view of this as well. Next to this, we've got our tiles. Um, and these tiles and navigation short group are just another way of navigating around the system. So as you can see here, we've got our balance sheet, a uh, trial balance, our p &L and our budget versus actual. And we'll have a look at these two reports um, just after we've been through the dashboard. Now, below this here, we've got our subsidiary navigator. Um, so right now we are looking at all of our data from a consolidated level. We're looking at, at the parent company um, just now. Now, what I can then do is set up multiple subsidiaries into NetSuite and then just drill down to look at the data for our Netherlands subsidiary. Now, as I've clicked on this, um, this will then change all of my information to only the performance of our Netherlands subsidiary. And if I scroll up here, you also see that all of my uh, financials are going to be changed into euros. So NetSuite is going to automatically um, exchange that into the correct um, currency um, and that's going to be based off of a daily uh, update that we've got from the foreign exchange rate which can be used using Xignite or HSBC and then that will also keep a historical rate as well for any reporting uh, requirements. So I'm just going to go back up into my parent company um, what you'll uh, also see here is an elimination subsidiary. Now, what NetSuite will also do is it will track any transactions in between um, the subsidiary. So any intercompany transactions 
and it will then hold it within this uh, subsidiary. And then as part of the period end, you would then um, eliminate any intercompany transactions and journal that into our parent company here so that there's no inflation of profits. Coming down to near the bottom of our dashboard, we've got uh, two trend graphs, which shows our monthly receivables trend and monthly payables as well. And again, there's a long list of um, different ones that we can set up um, based out of the box, and we can also set up custom ones as well. So you can see it's looking at different KPIs, but you can also create your own custom ones as well. Um, and you can also change the view, the period, periods of time that you're looking at, and that just quickly updates. And that's all based on the subsidiary level view that you're looking at there. Now we've then got our financial scorecard, which is similar to our KPIs, which just gives you a bit more deeper information. And um, so if you're wanting information such as your EBITDA, your uh, gross profit percentage, um, revenue, net income, etc., it's got all this information in here. And you'll see that that's comparing it over uh, more periods than the KPIs. Um, and you've also got the ability to drill down into where that information is coming from. Now, last but not least, um, we've got a portlet for our bank reconciliation summary. Um, and you'll see here that although I don't actually have a bank integrated with NetSuite because I don't have a demo bank account, um, NetSuite has kindly offered to show what it would look like if we did. So we can see that it was last reconciled in the end of January. Um, and we can see all of the bank accounts and the statuses of that as well. Now, that's just some of the portlets that we can get um, from NetSuite. Um, there's also an additional uh, amount. So if you want any kind of analytics in your calendar, an RSS feed, um, I'm pretty sure somebody uh, managed to actually get Sky Sports onto their dashboard using RSS. Um, I wouldn't tell my manager that, but... Um, you've also got different uh, KPI meters and additional um, ones as well. And then you can also see um, any upcoming information on the new upgrade for NetSuite there as well. Okay, Doc, so that's a whistle stop tour of our NetSuite dashboard at this point in time. And um, what I'm then going to do is show you our PL. So, what I can see here is our expenses have increased quite dramatically as well as our sales within the past two months. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just open that up in a new tab and I can do that using NetSuite's browser based functionality. So as you can open up this here, you can see that it's quite a streamlined chart of uh, accounts. Uh, and this is just because it's one of NetSuite's leading practices to streamline the processes where possible. Now you'll see that this doesn't really impede on any reporting functionality in a bit. But what I'll do is I can see that um, we've got our admin expenses, which are quite high. So I can then open that up in a new tab again. This would take me to all of our admin expenses for the month of February. And I could then go into our, um, I'll go into this bill here, actually. So I don't know if you've been counting how many clicks that's been, but if we're just counting the click throughs, and that's about three clicks down to the transaction level detail here once this invoice uh, loads up. Um, I am going to uh, stake a claim just at the beginning of this and because NetSuite are in the middle of doing their upgrades, the demo accounts aren't at the fastest, but the production accounts are still working just as normal. Um, so I'm hoping the pages aren't too slow in this webinar today. There we go. So you can see here, we're down at the invoice level. It's still uh, got a status of open, and we can see exactly what has been uh, purchased in this here. So I'll just go back to our P&L, and I'll just put the data back. So it's shown us from last January, or maybe Feb, so it was a full year. Um, and we can also look at different periods as well. So you've got standard ones. You can actually favourite them if you want to keep that as a favourite. Um, and that'll come up there. Um, but we'll just keep the customised one for just now. Um, and we can also look at it via different subsidiaries as well. So you'll see that you can. we've also got Ireland because um, we've got a few inactive ones in the system. Now, what I can then do is refresh that, and that will then show me all of my information from the past year. 
Okay, Doc. So some of the other functionality that you'll get with the NetSuite reporting um, is the ability to collapse these and then just open it up as is. And um, you can also expand these as such. And um, you can also export all of these reports into Excel, PDF, CSV, pardon me, um, a Word document. You can also print them and you can also email them and schedule them to be emailed. So Perhaps the PL isn't the best example for this, but if you had um, budget reports or sales reports that had to be scheduled out to go out at the end of each month or the beginning of every week, then this is a, a function that you could use to send out to um, different heads of departments, for example, um, just to schedule an email to be sent out to these people and that will be sent directly from NetSuite um, to the recipient. Now, we're going to look at our columns here, and this is where we can really slice and dice our financial data. So what we've got set up are different classifications, um, and with NetSuite, you get three out of the box, which are class, department, and location. Um, and what these allow you to do is tag these onto transactions so that you can report across a myriad of different levels. Um, and although we have three out of the box, we've also got the ability of having an unlimited amount of customs uh, classifications as well. Um, which could be added on and that could be used for, um, for example, internal projects that you might want to be reporting on um, that aren't uh, going to be customer facing and you just want to track the cost and you may want to use it for tracking any fixed assets, etc. So if I click on our class hierarchy, um, we'll be able to see all the different projects that we've got ongoing. So I've treated this as different um, kind of clinical trial projects that we've got. Um, so we've, we can see that we've got project one um, and discovery pre-clinical, pre um, but we've also got um, project two in clinical and we can uh, clean that up so the clinical goes after the pre-clinical as well. Um, but it's really just showing you that um, you can track these different um, transactions and data onto your PL and other reports. Um, and it also just means that using this hierarchy uh, structure, we can have ch uh, parent-child relationships. So although it's for project one, you could then pin that down to a more uh, accurate level of what you want to report on. Now, the same can be said for our departments as well. So if I go into our department hierarchy, we can then see um, the different departments or course centers that we've got. So admin, biology, and we then split up operations by procurement and supply chain, um, and also split up the R&D by kind of development product, project manager, et cetera. So you're really able to kind of split up all of these different costs um, and track them at a really kind of detailed level, which a lot of other accounting systems would really struggle with as well. So hopefully you can see the benefit of that. Um, in addition, you've also got the ability to do a subsidiary. It's going to look exactly as you expected to. Um, so it's just going to show us the different information there. So, yep, we've got a couple of inactive ones under our UK sub as well. Um, and last but not least, if we look at our accounting period hierarchy as well, it's going to show us our different uh, financial quarters with also the months in them as well. So from the month of February 2023, it's going to show us um, each individual month, the, the total for the quarter um, as well. So it's this kind of quick information and not having to rely on spreadsheets that really kind of make the next week stand out, especially to pre-revenue life science businesses. Um, I imagine if you're uh, already in the revenue stage that you're going to have something similar to this, but it's really making sure that NetSuite is much tidier, much faster, and much more accurate as well. Okay, Doc. So now that we've viewed the P&L, what we'll do is we'll have a quick look at the budgets um, versus actual. So I'll just click into this. And what, as you can see here, the report immediately shows um, what our actual amount is and what we had budgeted for. So as you can see, we're wildly over budget for um, the sales and imagine probably the rest of it, uh, depending on the amount of transactions in this demo account. Um, but we can see, also see the amount over budget and the percentage of the budget as well. Now, this can be tracked down to your nominal codes. It can also be used the classifications as well. So if you wanted to uh, budget by department or by your projects as using that class uh, classification, should have mentioned as well the class classification we normally look at as your different revenue streams. Um, it just depends on all the different ways that you want to report on. 
Um, what we can also do is um, kind of track by uh, budget by subsidiary, um, just so that you've kind of re really got that detailed uh, budget versus actual. In addition to this, you can also have multiple budgets. So you might have your legacy budget um, at the start of the year. You might also have to rebudget based on the performance of the first quarter. Um, you might have also uh, set up different kind of what if scenarios as well, um, depending on the progress that you've made. And these budgets can be set up within the system and they can also be imported um, from Excel as well. So um, you really have that kind of flexibility on what you want to do with the budgeting. Okay, Doc, so that's um, kind of overview of NetSuite so far. And um, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to show you the procure to pay process. Now, what we're going to do for that is jump into an employee center uh, user role. And what this is, is this is the light user um, that NetSuite provides. So the sole purpose of this user is for uh, purchases and um, expenses, and you can approve invoices on this as well. Um, so as you can see here, the dashboard is much more basic. Um, so to split up the two user, user licenses that NetSuite has, you've got Employee Center licenses, which does exactly as I just said, and anything else would require the general access user license. Now we can see all of the purchases, purchases and the statuses of them um, in the system um, and also the expense reports as well that I have submitted. Um, so if I wanted to enter a purchase request, um, I would then click in here. Now a purchase request is essentially the kind of step for a purchase order. So as employee center a role, I'm just going to simply submit um, a request for somebody to purchase this. Um, it's not going to create a purchase order uh, immediately at this point in time. So this takes us to our purchase request form. Um, and what I would then be able to do is choose from a list of vendors that we've got up set up within the system. Now, I'm, I know that I'm going to uh, use the Computer Plus distributors. However, people that are using your employee center license might not um, know what supplier to use. So what you can then set up is for a, kind of a, dummy, subsid uh, a dummy supplier um, to be set up, and then whoever is approving that purchase order can then change that to the relevant supplier um, based on that. Now, what I can then do is I can add a memo. I can say, okay, I want to receive this by um, Thursday, for example. Um, and I'm also going to look at the location. And this is based on um, the uh, location that Abby Kwan is set up as on her employee record. Now, for these types of forms that we're going to be looking at today, whether it be purchase requests, sales orders, um, invoices, we these are the kind of standard uh, fields that are kind of set up within the system, but we can then add in custom fields that's going to track the information that you need um, to be kind of recording and reporting on within your system. Um, so coming down to our uh, purchase uh, request, in the line level, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to enter an, an item. Now, this might be a bit unfamiliar to you if you haven't seen this in ERP systems before, but what NetSuite kind of tries to use as a, le a leap in practice is to have items set up for purchases and sales. So although you might not be tracking um, your inventory or stock, what can you use um, our items for is just to make it much more user friendly. So what we've got set up here is an item called computer equipment. And on this item, um, it will have the different accounts and nominal codes that are going to be associated with that item and any transactions that, uh, uh, that it's in. Now, because it's quite a vague one, um, we've not really set up the information on it. What on choosing this item, it would then pull through all the information that we've got on this item. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to buy a new MacBook um, and I'm in the testing department, so that's there. Um, I'm actually working on the uh, preclinical uh, stage of project one. Now, what I can then see is if I was tracking the inventory, it would show me how many I've got on hand, how many are available. 
Um, and what I can then choose is how many I want to buy here. So I'm just going to buy the one MacBook. And based on the last time, the last purchase that uh, was made for computer equipment at the rate of 910, I'm just going to keep it at that for this point um, as well. So I'm just going to add this. Now, that's an example of using the items functionality within NetSuite. If you just wanted to use the nominal codes, you can still do that in the expense uh, tab here. So what that is then going to do is based on the information on the item record, it has looked at the tax code for that and it's shown the expected receipt date. Um, and what we've also got is a budget warning as well. So I can see that we have set up a budget validation um, within the system. So on requesting this purchase, it's going to look into the system to see is this hitting a nominal code where a budget has been set up? Um, is it going to meet that budget? Is it going to be under budget? Is it going to be over budget? And also, should it warn uh, uh, the purchase requestee or is it going to just not let them do it at all? And that's up to you and how you want the session to be implemented. So I'm just going to save this. And because it's associating it with a budget, as you then... Um, yeah, it's going to show me that one or more transaction lines either do not have a matching budget or exceeding budget. Um, but it's still going to submit that anyway because that's the way I've set it up to um, at this point in time. Now, as I mentioned, it's not going to go straight to a purchase order. What it's actually going to do is it's going to be sent to Abiquan's supervisor. Um, and that's just for approval. Um, so it's got inbuilt approvals um, and you can set up um, different workflows. Um, however, using the standard uh, out-of-the-box leading practice uh, approval functionality within NetSuite, what Abby Kwan has on her employee record is a purchase uh, limit and an approval limit as well. So, for example, it might be that Abby Kwan has got a purchase limit of zero, so everything needs to go for approval. Um, and then this can set up a different hierarchy so that it just goes all the way up the hierarchy until it's got the relevant uh, approval limit. However, if there is a bit more kind of complex uh, workflows required, um, you can actually um, set up different workflows, whether it be departmental uh, hierarchies or have a delegation of authority, etc. But as you can see here, we've got a pending supervisor approval status here. Um, and if I go on to my related records, I can see um, exactly who we're waiting on. So at this moment in time, um, Carol Morgan would have received an email from NetSuite just to say that you have got an approval waiting. Um, and what this will also show is it will show on uh, Carol Morgan's reminders. Now, Carol Morgan is a financial controller, so I'll just log into her profile here. So we can see here on the reminders that we've got a purchase request to approve. Um, and we can see that we've got the one here. Um, so I'm just going to uh, open this up. Now, what could happen is I could open these both up and then just uh, see that they're fine and then click approve and approve all. But for the sake of this demo, I'm going to click in to show exactly um, what happens here. So I can see that um, all of the information that's been filled in already by Abby. Um, and all I need to do here is approve or reject. Now, if I rejected, um, it could be it would be sent to Abby to let her know. Um, and you can also do reject with a note on the reason why it's been rejected. Now, I'm just going to approve just for the purpose of this demonstration. Um, and then what this will then do is generate the purchase order. Now, I'm going to go into my uh, recent records and just check the status of this. So we can see that it has been approved by the supervisor and there's now pending receipts. And what we can also do is print this purchase order off just to see what that looks like. So next week, you can generate the purchase order um, and you could save um, the purchase order and then send it to the supplier. Or what you could have is actually next week could send it directly to the supplier um, from next week with the relevant PO. Um, so this is just going to show me. Uh, we've got a slightly blown up logo here, but this is just an example of what it could look like. Um, we've got um, implementation a team that's kind of skilled to make sure that it looks exactly like your existing uh, 
uh, format for your stationery, or we can add in um, new uh, touches to it as well and add in additional information that we've got. Good luck. So what we're now going to do is we're going to receive um, this MacBook. Um, and this might not be something that everybody kind of wants to do. Um, you might just want it to go straight to uh, the invoice stage. Um, but what we kind of tend to want to leave in practices is to receive all of our POs. Um, and that just means that we can generate accruals off the back of our purchase orders as well. And really kind of track that uh, throughout the system. So I've went into our inventory manager who's got the ability to uh, receive. Um, and I'm just going to open up our purchase order. So we can see it's PO 143. Um, and as you can see, I could bulk receive using these checkboxes. But again, I'm just going to go into our uh, purchase order at this stage. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to generate is an item receipt. And as you can see here, we've got visibility that we can op open up um, what purchase order it's been created from. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to receive it into the Manchester location that we've got set up. And it's only one, um, so that's fine. We could also set up a return reason if it was damaged or faulty, for example. Um, and we could also say that we received two if we needed two, um, if they'd maybe made an error. But what we'll then do is we will just save this for some speed. Um, and at this point, it will then be ready to invoice. Um, now, NetSuite um, doesn't have OCR as standard just yet, but there are third party um, applications, to be honest, a really wide range of them um, that can be used. And these would then use OCR scanning uh, technology to bring in your invoices. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our AP analyst role to do this. Um, but really what, we've, what we can actually see is if we're using purchase orders, we don't actually need the OCR technology. Um, we can just look at the purchase orders which are outstanding and ready to build. So I can see here we've got our purchase order 143. I can then open this up. And we, could then, uh, and we could have the invoice handy here, just to make sure that the invoice is actually um, the same as what we agreed in the original purchase order. Um, so NetSuite actually has two or three way matching out of the box, and um, it's all automated. So what NetSuite will then do is look at our um, purchase order. I will then see that that matches with the item receipt that we used. And if you don't want to use item receipts, that's it. We just miss out this step. And then what we could then use is the invoice for our purchase order. Um, and then it will match all of these together. And if there are any discrepancies, um, it will then flag this up and make sure that it requires extra approval. So what we're going to do is I'm going to enter in a random uh, invoice number here. Once that loads. There we go. Um, so what we can see here is this is the invoice and it matches. What I'm going to say is actually on the invoice, it came in at £920. So we can see that there's a discrepancy between the purchase order and the invoice. Now you can see it's at a status of pending approval. If I was to save this and it was at £910, NetSuite would just automatically approve that. However, because there's going to be a discrepancy between the two and three, the three-way match, it's then going to flag this as need, requiring further approval. So what we will then see is once NetSuite has looked at that, um, it's going to check that and then send it for uh, approval with the right person. And again, these workflows can be set up um, on the implementation just to completely match your, your different processes. So as you can see here, like I said, it's went to status of pending approval. And if we look at the bill exception, um, we can see that the bill amount uh, exceeds the PO amount, and that's why it's went for approval. And if we go back, we can see that it's went directly to Carol Morgan again. So if I just go into Carol Morgan, she would again have received uh, a notification to say that uh, this bill is uh, requiring approval. Um, 
and also it will pop up on her reminders there. So if I then have a look, I can then see, I'll just click in and approve that. And now that this has been approved, it's now going to be open for payment. Um, so what we'll show you now is, here we go, it's got a status of open. Um, and just to kind of get to the very end of this uh, full procure to pay process, we'll look at NetSuite's electronic uh, payment uh, module. So if I go into this bit here, what we can then do is look at all of our open invoices that we've got. So next week's going to look at all of your invoices that are outstanding payment um, or are due to be paid, depending on the payment terms. Um, and what we're going to do is choose the correct bank first. Um, and then cho cho we'll choose the AP account. And then what we'll have is a selection of different invoices that we want to pay. The next week can generate BAX files and other uh, payment format files depending on your uh, bank's requirements. Um, and what we can then do is generate these payment files, uh, export them from NetSuite and then upload uh, directly into your bank, which will then send the bank the orders to pay your suppliers. Okay, so what we've got here is that that will be able to hear. So we've got our invoice voice that one i think i'm sorry it was this one here um so we've got um the one from today um and it's going to be at that amount so what i can then do is i can choose i don't want to pay that one don't want to pay that one and then i can submit it and that will generate the backs file from there okay doc so that's been a kind of quick demonstration of netsuite and um the procure to pay process um, of course, if you've got any questions, please feel free to add them into the Q&A and I'll just address them just now. Yeah, so we have got a couple of questions in the chat here, Jack. Yeah. Um, the first one is, does NetSuite integrate with Amici? Uh, yeah, so that's a good question, actually. So a lot of like life sciences uh, businesses that use Amici, um, typically for their kind of life science-based procurement, Obviously, I've just went through the procurement process there in NetSuite, but we, we find that it actually works really well with NetSuite. Um, and we've worked with Amici many times. Amici have their own uh, integration out of the box with NetSuite. Um, so on implementation of a previous life science-based uh, customer, and um, we actually worked in parallel with Amici to set up that integration um, alongside their actual implementation. Um, so, yes, there is an integration to that. Okay. Uh, the next question here is, can approvals be set up for multiple departments in one PR? Um, yes, so there's, kind of, there's a lot of flexibility on how the approvals work. Um, what you can actually do is have kind of line-level uh, based approvals. So, for example, if you were doing a PO to a supplier um, and... What you would actually have is instead of it being based on it goes to your supervisor, you could actually have it go to multiple heads of different departments. And um, so for one line, you might have it actually requires uh, the IT team's approval. And um, so it would then go to the IT team for approval. Um, and then the other couple of lines might need the, I don't know, the, the head of finances approval. So it could then go to um, the head of finances so you can really kind of set up really kind of complex workflows depending on the uh, structure and processes that you want to set up. Great, thanks. Um, the last question we've got at the minute is, does NetSuite have projects functionality? Um, yes. So that, that's something that can be requested with um, life sciences companies because um, traditionally a lot of the that they're, what, what they're working on is different projects where they're putting a lot of research in and then building that up. Um, what we've found is that you don't really need the full uh, project's functionality, so you don't need to get the full uh, the full shebang, uh, as you might call it. Um, you can really just start with the financials and then using those cu custom classifications. And um, You can really just use them to track each project and without having to pay extra. Um, and then when you're further down the line, 
you might want to track projects at that point and that could be implemented um, at a later stage uh, just so that the system is growing with you. Great, thanks. Uh, that's all the questions we've got at the minute, unless anyone else has any uh, sort of last minute ones you want to fire in. Please feel free. I could talk. Well, I'm uh, free to for the next five minutes, so I'm happy to address any questions that we've uh, that we've got to answer. Uh, thanks everybody for joining and spending your time with me today. Um, if you do have any um, kind of further inquiries, just please uh, get in contact using the details that we've got on screen just now, um, and we'll kind of try to uh, set you up with a tailored demo. Or if you've just got any uh, commercial questions as well, then we can you know, help out with that. Uh, sorry, Jack, there's another question that's just coming there. Um, does it have an integration with Spend Desk for expenses? Yes, so NetSuite has its own expense functionality. However, if you already have Spend Desk or are looking for kind of more comprehensive expense um, functionality, then yes, Spend Desk is an example of one of those kind of uh, sweet app partners. Um, so they've obviously got their own system, but they've provided their own out-of-the-box integration with NetSuite. So yes, there is an integration with Spendesk, and that can then be used within NetSuite. Brilliant. Thank you.